Now let's take a look at the brain's role in sexual motivation. We're looking at figure 7.4 right here. It's a, an area called the sexually dimorphic nucleus of the rat or the SDN. This is an area of the hypothalamus. We're going to be talking a lot about the hypothalamus in this section. And um, sexually dimorphic refers to a difference between the two sexes, so two forms, right? And we can see here that the SDN in males is about this big, and in adult females, it's much, much smaller. So we're definitely seeing a, a sex difference here between biological males and females in the size of the SDN. And this difference seems to be driven by testosterone levels. In an adult female that had been exposed to testosterone during development, we see that the SDN does get much larger. And so we're seeing an example of how a sex hormone like testosterone can influence brain development. Um, and so the SDN is, again, the sexually dimorphic nucleus. It's within the hypothalamus. And it's in this area called the medial preoptic area of the hypothalamus, MPOA. This whole area is actually involved in copulation for both males and females. And it is, um, the SDN is this area within the MPOA that shows the sexual difference, the difference between males and females. But the structure is involved in copulation in the actual sexual activity. In contrast, we can leave the hypothalamus for a moment and take a look at the amygdala, in particular, the medial amygdala, so the middle part of the amygdala. This area is involved in sexual excitement in response to stimuli. And it kind of makes sense if you remember that the amygdala is involved in emotion. It's also involved in other things that are sort of appealing to people. So for example, food um, and other pleasant stimuli do seem to also activate the amygdala as well as you know threatening and other sort of scary type emotional stimuli. So it's, it is kind of consistent with that notion of the amygdala being involved to, um, in our reactions to both pleasant and unpleasant stimuli that it's involved in the sexual excitement to, in response to seeing someone that is appealing. When we look at other areas in the hypothalamus, we see that there are areas that are specifically important for females and males. So for females, we see that the ventral medial hypothalamus, abbreviated VMH, is involved in receptivity to male sexual advances and is also active during copulation. In males, the paraventricular nucleus, the PVN, also again, part of the hypothalamus, is involved in copulation. And then remember the sexually dimorphic nucleus is larger in males than in females. Have you ever heard the expression, they had chemistry? Well, when it comes to sexual attraction, that expression is a fairly accurate way of explaining what's going on. Not in the sense of a romantic Bunsen burner lit dinner, but because of the involvement of certain biological scents. Have you ever noticed how some people smell more attractive to you than others? In this video, you'll find out why. It's been known for a long time that animals release chemical hormones called pheromones that are involved in sexual attraction. The mechanism and reasons for this attraction in humans were a mystery. That is, until 1995, when a study looked at how man's genes, that's DNA by the way, not blue genes, could be detected by women through their sense of smell. The study focused on one gene in particular, the MHC gene, which instructs a type of immune response in the body. The scientists set out to test heterosexual women's sensitivity to male odors. The study involved volunteers, 49 women and 44 men, all of whom were selected for their variety of MHC gene types. Men were given clean t-shirts to wear for two nights and then returned to the scientists. The researchers put each t-shirt in a box, equipped with a smelling hole and invited the women volunteers to come and sniff the boxes. 
the women had to sample the odor of seven boxes and describe it. They were asked to give each box scores for intensity, pleasantness, and sexiness. Almost like speed dating for t-shirts. The results were impressive. Women preferred the scents of t-shirts worn by men with MHC genes different from their own. This all proves and brings new meaning to the term opposites attract. It seems that we are more attracted to people who are genetically different to ourselves. This is very useful to species, as more diversity in the genetics of the population increases its chance of survival and resistance to change. However, please don't give up on washing. So some of these studies have shown that women prefer odors of men who differ in their MHC, like the video showed. Couples similar in MHC tend to be less fertile, and couples with greater differences in their MHC tend to have greater sexual satisfaction. Now let's take a look at these adorable animals here called prairie voles. Prairie voles mate for life, so other voles, mountain voles, do not. The prairie vole has been a model species for looking at pair bonding because they're mammals like humans and they are known to pair bond uh, much more than many other non-human animals do. The mechanism that allows for this long-lasting pair bond have been studied and two hormones come up with this type of research, oxytocin and vasopressin. Oxytocin is more involved in females during pair bonding, and vasopressin is more involved in males during pair bonding. It turns out that this pair bonding is made possible through the heightened levels of oxytocin and vasopressin found in prairie voles after they mate. So after they mate, there are heightened levels of these uh, hormones. And in males, vasopressin tends to reduce uh, aggression, allowing for greater social bonding. And oxytocin increases sexual intimacy. So allows for, again, also social bonding.